My people, my people, my people, it's the wealthy guy here, and we're here with <laughs> the first My People podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So today, I have on a guest that I've known for over 10 years. Over 10 years. Over 10 wow. years. We went to college together. He came to visit me in Hong Kong. Right. Yeah, All right. Man. Your business. Causeway Bay. What Causeway up? Causeway Bay. Your business. Kind One of shot. What up? There. Kowloon. What up? All of those places. What up? <laughs> um, and, you know, he's also an entrepreneur, but he Sorry. has a business background, a finance background. We and both I'll, do. Yeah. I'll let you talk more about, you Absolutely. know, where we'll you came from, finance. right? And how'd you get here? Um, yeah. But really cool story. He is a certified public accountant. Indeed, I am a CPA, man. From there's Brooklyn. A, there's, there's applause button. Th Shh. There's no. <laughs> there's no. There's no applause button. We can do yeah, our man, own applause. Get the effects right. What's going um, on here? But he is a certified public accountant. He also has a master's degree in taxation. What's That's your correct. master's degree in? Taxation. I have a good memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got an MST, man. Yeah, so a master's degree in taxation. Those are my more studious days, you know. Right, right, right. You when still I wanted studious. to be a partner, you right. know. Got a major Fortune 500 company and all that good stuff. Right, right. Now right. I just want to run my business, man. Exactly, and make money. And make money. And That's make it. money. Get on, your money on, on my own terms. On <laughs> <laughs> but even even when you're like an entrepreneur, you still can't do everything on your own terms. Well, look, whatever you do, I, I I believe that you still have to have that same level of ambition right. to make it to the next level. You still got to network. Right. You still got to join professional organizations. Right. You still have to, you know, show up. Yes. There's still accountability. Right. The only difference is that your time, you're paid for 100% versus 20%, if you feel what it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That is so true. Hit the needle on the head. The money goes to you. The and money then goes if you, to you have to distribute the money, then you distribute the money. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. right. Um, so so make sure that you, you come in a little closer to the mic too when you talk. Got so you, like you. I was like I said, uh this is Mr. Igami. Mr. Igami and wealthy guy. Yes, Ruel Ruel Matthew. podcast. And I've known Ruel for a very long time. Ruel has taught me a lot of things that I know now. Mm -hmm. uh, from when I started, you know, first making the code and, and, and things, even even up until now. Um, and he's always, one of the things that I admire about him is he's always educating himself. You always got to be learning. You always have to be learning your craft yes. and, you know, stepping your game up all the time. And, and Ruel is someone who, who spends and, you know, invests a lot of money back into his business as well as Absolutely. invest a lot of money into education. Absolutely. All right, which is which is super important, I think, to be be a successful entrepreneur. Absolutely, man. I just started a, a sewing class. Like I'm trying to make suits from scratch myself. Right, know, which so is really cool. Tailors. Really cool. So, like I've been complaining to Ruel that my hand is not that that steady, but I'm I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. You you can fix an unsteady hand. You know what I'm <laughs> How was that? Lessons. True. True, true, true. That's like true. somebody going to play the piano. If they don't got chops, you could teach them chops. Practice. You could teach them how to hit the keys the right way. And he knows how to play the keyboard. That too, man. Right. A lot of, I, a lot of talents, man. I don't, have a, I don't have a keyboard here in the studio. If I did, I would probably nah, let you get on there and play a little something for nah, everybody. Man, but, I'm not, <laughs> but I don't have a keyboard. so well, I'm I, never, not, I never took music seriously, man. In retrospect, well, you, I felt like I, I should have. I mean, I do production be, and things like that, you know, for artists, but... To be like a singer or like just an artist in general? Artist, singer, producer, all of that. You know how to sing? I can sing, man. No, I, bro, I ain't never hear you sing. Hey, no, no, I, I take that back. I probably... I, I used to I, sing in Hebron SDA School's choir, man. Those of y'all who went to Hebron, Ebron, all my ICNs, all my Zos. What up? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Y'all know what time it is. He, as I mentioned... Uh, Mr. Igami is from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn, y'all. So All he right. represents the Caribbean massive hard. Exactly. I'm I'm Trinidadian, but um, I grew up around Jamaicans, Haitians, uh, Grenadians, Guyanese, you, you name it, Africans. So everything. 
But that's the beauty of New York. York. I know know I'm doing a CSA show. Shout out to CSA, Baruch. I'll be out there next week. Yes, so Royal... Shensia. Shout out to (laughs) Shensia. She'll be performing. And no big time uh, uh, reggae artist. You don't know Shensia? I don't know Shensia. No, 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 no. Come here, mommy, mommy. (laughs) Yo, she made that woman's anthem. Like, yo, independent, yeah. I don't, I don't know. No, Shout out to know. Ding Dong. Batman forward, Batman pull up. I know that song. He's is gonna he going to be there? He's going to be there. So shout out to Ding Dong. You feel me? Is he going to do... Sean, what's good? Uh, uh, I, I don't want to put on a fake Caribbean accent, but is, is he going to do Batman forward? He got to do Batman forward. He has Batman to do that. Up. That's his biggest tune. He has tune. to do that Yo, song. Ding Dong. Yo, if you don't do Batman forward, yo. <laughs> I'll find you in Jamaica. <laughs> So he has to do that he song. He has to do that song. Bro. That is probably the only song. I, I didn't know his name, but I know that song. Yeah, and then he got the, the summer is hot. It's a sunny day. I don't, I don't know that one either. <laughs> I don't know that one either. So this is a big plug for the CSA show. Those of y'all who come in, I uh, can't wait to see y'all over there. We'll be doing a little segment, you know, so. Yes, so both Ruel and I are graduates of Bernard and Baruch College, City University. He said the full name, Bernard M. Baruch. (laughs) Bernard M. Baruch College. That's right. Um, That's right. So, Ruel. What's up? Tell us a little. Should I take the gum out? Absolutely. I don't even know why you came on my podcast chewing gum. You're trying to Angela Yee me. Y'all see this, right? You're trying to Angela Yee me. All right. No gum. No gum. All right. So, Mr. Igami, Ruel. What's up? Tell us a little bit. Give us, give us some more. I gave a little bit about you know who you are, what you do, your CPA. Yeah, man. But we talked a lot about the business side. Yeah, a little Look, more about you. My life is 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 like very complex. You know, I've taken a lot of different directions. Uh, I of course grew up in East Flatbush, but I was born in Trinidad. Right. My father was a pastor that. out there. Come on. I, I thought, thought you were born that, here. Man. Every story I do, I tell. I, my that first you was two born years, in Trinidad. Was, uh, was in Trinidad. Yeah. Two years. Okay, that one really counts. I was living count. in Kumuto. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Is this like a, a town? It's in the bush. Only only green thing over there. Okay. Only bush. Right? Okay. So, that, you know, that's where I spent the first two years. I came up when I was uh, two years old to yep. New York. My father was a pastor. He used to minister in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He used to, like, he was big in all the districts down there. Uh, but he came to New York to expand his ministry. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. So, at post two years old. Grew up in East Flatbush. Kind of, you know, kind of rough. I was surrounded with a lot of, um, you know, gangs and things like that. But just try to work hard to avoid that. Right. You know? But I still had the the street smarts. But in in my head, I'm like, you know what? My goal is not to be in a gang, get get arrested, go to jail. My goal is to be a professional, be someone, be an example to the community. Right. And that's that's a big part of the story. We could talk about suits all day, but at the end of the day, my empowerment uh, mission to a lot of people watching me is like don't let your circumstances define you all right so they probably don't even know that you do suits right the people on your live do but the people on my live they don't. know me man they you always know do my you. photography some man of, some of them know you some of them don't so all right. tell them what you do fair enough fair enough so uh for those of you who don't know me my name is Ruel matthew i am mr agami or i own agami collection which is a brand based in brooklyn new york uh we basically do we basically do custom tailoring men's and women um, I do everything from dressing people for weddings to dressing celebrities for major events. Like we just dressed Pleasure P for the Breakfast Club. Uh, he's a client. Uh, Deb Adney is a client. Um, IgamiCollection.com is my website. I mean, all the information is there. You can see what we do. We also do shows, New York Fashion Week. Uh, so yeah, man, that, uh, you know, designer slash custom tailor. I'm a custom tailor, but my, my style is different. Like I like to, you see, I got the olive green, the earth, earth tones, like, I like to incorporate flavor into uh, to what I do. So right, and yeah. you're a little vain too because you Why keep you looking that? in the monitor over here at yourself. Nah, you I gotta so make sure the light is hitting me right, man. Just Listen, got this haircut. You already know if you come on the Wealthy Guys show, the light's gonna be right. Hold up, y'all. Now, I'm the vain. light ain't that right right now. You started on thirty the live. minutes late because you <laughs> wanted to make sure the, the the shot was right. So. Right, exactly. So the Come light, on, you know, on 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 the phones. Is it's not that good, but the light that we have in the studio space and he can see the monitor right the next to us because good. there's a camera behind that's recording, is hidden. The light is hidden, you know. So so he sees himself in the monitor and he's like Jones in with himself over Listen, here in the man, monitor. I just believe in black excellence, you know. I believe in 
being your best self. Look, Igami image is about image. Right. It's like Igami is image called backwards. So that's right. what it's about. Um, so can I ask you a question now? Absolutely. How do you think the light is hitting me? Yo, wealthy guy, man. First of all, my man brought the platinum beard to the forefront. Like, shout out to this dude. Where's the applause button again? Beep, 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 beep. I'm gonna make our own applause button yeah. for the platinum beard, man. You know, I may have to invest in like a purple beard one of these days or like olive green to match my, my That would my be outfit, very you know West me? Indian. That would be very West Indian, yes. for real. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, you're right. Um, but but tell no, look, I, look, let's let's take a step back because earlier you mentioned something. You said um, when I came out to Hong Kong. So, by the way, wealthy guy, he's a well-traveled man, right? We were in college together. He studied and went. To, he worked in Hong Kong for three years. This guy was overseas for three years. Yeah. He was out there. So yes. I'm like, yo, you out of town? Like, I'm going to come visit you. I need, I'm always big on if somebody's out of town in a new place I haven't been, I'm going to visit. I don't care. I'll find the money, right? So I went there on my little college salary. I went you, there, visited you did. him. We was out there for like a week and a half. And first of all, a lot of my initial style, I learned from this guy. I'm not even going to lie. Like, you were definitely one of the most stylish people in Baruch College when I was coming up. Right. It was like a couple of you. It was like you and, and like two other people. Very stylish, just, right? Just me. Just me. He said just, just you. <laughs> not RIP and, but... Yes. Um. Yeah, this is, you know, so a lot of that I learned from you. So... I remember we went to a custom tailor and you. Arif. We went to Arif. <laughs> Shout Arif. out to Arif in Hong Kong, one of my first tailors I ever worked with to start my business. And I was just the one who had the ambition to be like, yo, let's bring this to New York. How do we do this? Yes. Send me swatches. Yes. What do you need? You need measurements? All right, what measurements do you need from, from, from my customers? All right, so even before the wealthy guy as a brand was started up, Ruel was. Doing wealthy guy things. Ruel That's was doing fact. custom, cu custom clothing. He custom had this terrible. idea. He bought it back to New York from Hong Kong. That's a fact. For a while, he you know you worked with Arif. I worked with Arif. He was my first tailor. Again, shout out to Arif. All the initial clothes I was doing. This is way back when I was a, a college sophomore. Already started a tailor for people. Make shirts, make jackets, make pants for people. Um, that's how that's how I did the uh, Baruch College uh, WIB show because mm -hmm. they learned that I was doing suits. They invited me to do the show, and right. everything just snowballed after that. Like and now people you started can't booking get me out for of shows it. and this and that. And you know, in my head, I'm like, I'm working toward being a CPA, right? To going into Ernst and Young, the company that offered me a, a, a job offer, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if this is going to make money, so let me continue on that path. And I continued on that path for five years. You did. And I put all the, the connections, tailoring connections, the skills I had aside to go to corporate America. And you know what? Honestly, I think everything worked the way it should because the skills that I learned in corporate America helps me run my business better. I know. I say that every day. You feel me? You know, like, I'm like, yes, I'm glad that I'm out of it. But on the other hand, there's so many skills, especially Absolutely. like numbers. Numbers. You know, like the analytical. Calculated like, profitability. Yeah. Right? As entrepreneurs, we have to go out there and we have to determine what price is right for us. What do we charge? What do, what, how do we cost our things? How do we negotiate costs? What, what do we charge a community? Like, you know, all of that stuff, you need to know math. You need to be able to say, all right, look, if I charge this, I may lose money. If I have returns and da 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 you need to be smart in math. Right, yeah. So, I mean, I look at the analytics every day to manage my Instagram. Wow. You know? You, you have to look at those insights. Those insights will tell you the direction that you need to go in with your Instagram. So, I'm always telling people you have to, you know, make sure that you are looking at those analytics if you have a business page because that will help you to determine what, what demographic you need to do more is of. following you, what right. demographic is clicking the buttons. You may have more female followers and they like your stuff. Maybe it's time to do a female right. wealthy coat collection. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And honestly, that's one of the reasons I went into doing women's tailoring. And now I'm like the woman's suit guy. Like all the models hit me up for suits. Um I just did a suit. Shout out to Camille, she's on the line. I just met up with her to do a nice uh suit for her. Um, uh, shout out to Flurry. She just hit me up. She came to my pop up, bought like four suits. Um, she's always posting my stuff. So it's like, depending on your your demand, is how you're gonna you know adapt and customize your business. Right. So we are gonna pause for a second. All right. Don't hit the table. Okay. As you talk. 
I'm you're very passionate. I'm a very passionate. I know you. Robert. You are Robert. You are Paulie the Third. But when you hit the table, it's gonna hit the mic, and then also just make sure you get close to the mic. Cause right now I sound amazing. Oh, yeah. Right, I'm because thought, I'm listening to it. And my voice is louder than yours, though. No, it's lower. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. in, in mine is louder anyway because I have on headphones. Exactly. Right. So you know, ne- next next podcast, I make sure I have uh, headphones for the guests, so you can hear yourself and and adjust. I don't like headphones, man. I need them to see and, this flavor. Yeah. So so Ruel's really been into. Uh, oh, the other thing too. Yes. Look at the camera. If you talk, so the live is here Which for one? Got, like, us. Cameras, oh, bro. look at your phone, though. Don't worry about that, man. The battery is dying. My battery is dying. Don't worry about um, it, guys. <laughs> Those of y'all who get cut off on my live, join Robert Pauly's live. What? The, the wealthy, wealthy guy. guy. The wealthy guy. The wealthy guy. Wait, dude, you're going to go in front of the camera. That's all right, man. All right. Now that I'm going to have to do editing work to get get that out. No, man. Look, this is, listen, we're doing a podcast, all right? We need them to see all the, the, the mess ups, the, the good, the bad. They need to connect with us, man. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, I'm still gonna cut that part out. <laughs> it's the wealthy guy, so it has to, you know, like it gotta, it gotta be right, you, gotta be yeah. right. Um, let's see what else. So, you know, um, you touched a little bit on your, what, what do you wanna call it, accountant finance career? You did consulting, Consult- you so did all these things. I was an auditor than a consultant, basically. So auditing and, and consulting is what I did for five years. Right. And I'm sure at points you liked it. Okay. What'd you like about it? Hmm. Corporate America is very good for structure. That's it. It's like, you know, you know, you get your check every week. You don't got to worry about going out there. It's like when you're an entrepreneur, you like a line. If you don't kill right. me, you ain't going to eat. Right. Right. right? So, uh, sorry for the dramatic analogy, but, you know, that's basically what it is. The corporate, got your pension, got your paychecks, your benefits. Right. So, so I like the structure day, of it. And also, that. you have people that train you. Like, there's cer- certain people, sometimes you're assigned a mentor right. in the company you're in to train you and give you that. So there's a lot more structure involved in it. Right. Now, with the structure, it comes... Uh, lack of creativity because with the structure everything is already in place so right. you can't really bring your unique perspectives the way you want to a lot of companies yes. like there's yes. some exceptions to that but for the most part when you want to bring your unique perspectives it's like shot down sometimes you know I know I had to take away right right <laughs> right <laughs> I was like uh, this is a karate chop uh, I'm about to throw you off the show listen you know? man. Um, your, your followers love me though. They, do they? Yeah. I, I can't even see what the comments are saying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a bunch of fire emoji <laughs> emojis. You have to get you have to get fire emojis. You have to get uh one hundreds. Okay. You okay. gotta get one hundreds. And what you what gotta get the, the hands that oh, are like this. You got this. some hundreds, okay. One oh seven. Look, you gotta you gotta get the hands that are like this. Okay. That, that's right? what you know it's lit. That's what <laughs> that's what you know. Less. Say That's less. when you know that it's lit. So y'all know what to do. I want to see some fire, some hundreds. Some hundreds. Some hailing hands. Oh, I see fires on yours. I see okay. fires on yours. Okay. I see yeah, fires yeah, on your live. All right. Um, so, Ruel, you know, Ruel Mr. actually, Igami. Mr. 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 Igami actually was the one who came to me with the idea to do a podcast. Remember that? When That's you came right. for Absolutely. the photo shoot and you like, oh... You know, you should really do a podcast, and I was just like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have, you know, we are gonna try it. Please, let me tell you something. Podcast is like the future. Like, um, our opinions matter as black entrepreneurs who right. were in corporate America, who left to start our own business, who are out here figuring it out without sponsorship, without mentorship, right. without uh, investors backing us. Our perspectives matter. Yeah, you know they do. Um, and there's an audience out there for it. You're um, from Harlem. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm, I'm actually from the Bronx. You're from the Bronx. I'm from Brooklyn. But I've lived in Harlem for about seven years, so now I'm from Harlem. You know, if you live someplace like, for seven years... Shout out to years, Brooklyn. Shout out to Harlem. Shout out to Queens. Shout out to Long Island. Staten Island, man. I love all of y'all. Uh, Did I leave anything out? Shout out to White that, Plains, man. You said Queens? Did you yeah, say Queens? I said Queens. Queens. That was like the first one. Um, but what? You said Brooklyn, though. Brooklyn? Of Brooklyn, of course, man. Brooklyn, Queens. Yo, Brooklyn, stand up, man. Anybody from Brooklyn... So, so drop some BK comments. So, that might that might be more your audience. <laughs> yeah. My audience is is southern. There's a lot of people from New York. There's a lot of people in the Midwest. 
Okay. So, shout out to the Midwest. Shout out to the Midwest. Shout out to Ohio, Indiana. Um, Actually, we're to go to Indiana. Shout out to Atlanta. Soon. Shout out to North Carolina, South Carolina. Shout out to LA. I'll be in LA in June for a, a expo with this a new invention that I got, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Oh, can we talk about you going on? Can, can we talk about yesterday? No? Of course, of course. Yeah? Yes, we can. So, it's still in process, but yeah, we can talk about it. Okay, just broadly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So, yesterday, Ruel uh, auditioned for Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah, he auditioned for Shark Tank. That is so cool to me. So, Ruel, tell us a little bit about like what it was like. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, Shark Tank has open calls uh, every every year. Yep. They go to different cities. They were in Kentucky, LA, New York, all over. Um, literally fill out an application and go to the casting, wait online. Um, it was a lot of people at this one. It was about 500 people. Right. Uh, but you wait online and you pitch. And you pitch to the producers. This is not the actual Shark Tank, right? Right, the right. Audition it's, it's, it's the, is the, not the first sharks. step. They're not there, right? Yeah, it's, it's the first it's step. The first step, exactly. So it being the first step, you go, you speak to the producers, and they see if you're a good fit for the show. If you have an idea that's practical, if you have, if you're entertaining, you know, there's a bunch of factors that go into it. Right. Well, let me ask you: Were you entertaining? I don't know, man. I, I was, I was dry. I, I was just right to the point, man, because I feel like my product speaks for itself. Oh, I, I don't feel like I had to be. <laughs> I don't feel like I had to be the comic relief of the show. Right, know? right, right. So you went in there, and you were like, I hope you wasn't like all stiff. I was ready, man. But, but was you stiff? I had my glasses on. My glasses. The... I, had my, I, had my, I had my glasses on. I was ready. I had my... Um, did people come with... The next question that I have for you is, did people come with their products? Absolutely. I even posted it on my story. It was uh, one guy, he had this thing that projects in the air, ads and things like that when he walks mm -hmm. around. So he does like uh, self-advertising for people. Right. You had uh, people with patents. Uh, one lady, she already had her stuff in Bed Bath & Beyond. She had like this little shower uh, capsule that holds your, your shower uh, products. Right. A um, bunch of different, all different industries. Right. Um, one guy was in finance. He just wanted to pitch his product. Shout out to John Seif if you're on here. Uh, actually, someone I know who I ran into. Um, so, yeah, a lot of different products. So, can you tell us a little bit more about... Because you you have a you have a patent. I filed a patent two years ago. It got approved uh, uh, early this year, like twenty late twenty eighteen. It got approved. Right. So you have a patent for your product. So I own a patent. I'm an inventor. That's cool. That is Absolutely. very cool. Official inventor. Yes. You, you 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 can't clap, but next to oh, the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the loud clapping, y'all. I'm from um, Brooklyn, man. Yeah. As we know, as we know. So, so I think it's really cool that you have a patent. Absolutely. You know, most people in their lives will never have a patent. Mm. Um, you know, I don't want to say not me, right? But as of right now, I don't have anything that I, you know, like needs you can, to be. You didn't get a patent. In. patent. Mine took a little longer because we had to go back and forth with the USPTO just on specs of what it is. Right. Because it's a technical thing. You know, if you want to get legal protection, then your idea cannot infringe on other people's ideas. Right. So there's a lot of back and forth making sure that your specs are in order. So, but you may file and get approved in six months if, if, right. if it everything depends is, on what it is. Right. If everything is clear, everything is. Uh, is sensible. So, um, what I want to say is, uh, it's not a hard process. If you, if those of you who have ideas who want to file a patent, um, go to uh, USPTO.gov, and all the steps are there. Some people do it themselves. Uh, some people hire a patent attorney. Uh, that's the route I took. I just hired an attorney to take care of all the filing for me and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, it got approved and. We're just pushing a product now. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is, like I said, I've noticed since last year, you're doing more and more with the fedoras, more and more with the hats. You you incorporate them into your photo shoots, like your pop-up shop. Absolutely. You had these hats. You got the hat on today. That's a fact. What's up with the hats? So when I did my pop-up, basically how it transpired is instead of just having suits where it's a little bit higher priced, I wanted some more affordable things people could just pick up and throw on, you know, pocket squares, hats, 
scarves. I had some custom scarves with the Agami logo on it. Uh, I had a bunch of little accessories just because not everybody, you know, can drop, you know, several hundred dollars on a suit. Uh, most people just want to come in, just grab something light, but still support your business. So that's why we put the lower price items there too. Because right. before, all I had was suits. Right. Right? So now I have suits, fedoras, pocket squares, accessories, shirts. So we, we have the, you know, a good mix now. Right. I think that for me is a big, is a big, is something that I'm continuing to struggle with. What's that? Offering a lower cost product. Right, because my coat mm. is a thousand dollars. Right, because right. you're using the fur, and it is a lot that goes right. into making the suit. And even even the suit, and it's custom. Your stuff is custom, and it's so. custom. But even you know the suits that like I make for myself are mm -hmm. full canvas, right? So you Which know, I like by the way, this guy you. is you know he entered the suit business, and his suits are amazing. So those of y'all who need suits. Check out Robert, uh, wealthy guy as well. Yep. There you go. And, 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 and so I struggle because there's a lot of people who are like, you know, I love the wealthy guy. I love what you're doing. You know, one day I'll be able to support you. Mm. You know, one day I'm going to buy something from you. And, you know, uh, when I first started, a lot of people, they will, they, they will say, when are you going to make a more affordable coat option but it mm. can't be it's a custom item i mean then custom all right so <clears throat> you know i'm glad i took this tailoring class because i'm able to see from soup to nuts now you know how these things work i started my business uh sourcing everything right now i'm working on making things myself starting with this course right. now just so the followers understand what goes in a custom product is custom patterns have to be cut from fabric someone has to buy a piece of fabric Cut a pattern that uh, matches your size uh, and put that together. The fabric has to be purchased, the pattern has to be made, then cut, then sewn together, then the lighting has to be put in, and then any other features that you have, in your case, fur or monograms or anything like that, has to be added to that product. Right. This cannot be done overnight. Right. This can be weeks. This right? is this sometimes is something months that someone depending does with on their hands. Hand work, yeah. exactly. So this can be weeks or months, depending on what you want. Now, I believe for both of us, we can get things made in less than a month, right? You I know for don't get me started. For for, for <laughs> exactly, for my case, you know, less than a month. Yes, yes, typically yes. That's what. That's how long it should take. Three to four weeks is typically my turnaround for a custom product. Again, me taking your measurements and making something that reflects your personal body type. Now, if the more things you add to it, furs and linings and things right. like that, it requires more time. So, these price points reflect the amount of hours that are going into making the suit. As well as the, the materials. As well as the fabric. Certain fabrics, yeah. just one yard of fabric can be $40. To make a suit, it requires three yards, two to three yards. Right. So, already that's for a 12, that's already $120. So, just right. so you understand... Uh, where, where these costs are coming from. Right. It's good for the customer to understand what goes into it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? That's why, you know, when I am doing something where I'm, like, educating people, I try to, like, really break it down. Like, I did absolutely. a live on the difference between fused, half canvas, half canvas full, full canvas, canvas, right? A lot of people need to know that, too. There's different you know qualities of suits uh you you know there's the cheaper side where it's just all machine grade you could just consider it all machine grade to make it easy to understand right you have half machine half hand work and then you have all hand work right. right that's called fused half canvas and full canvas so depending on how much uh hand, hand work. work is going into it it's going to be more expensive right yeah yeah and that in the hand work stuff is what is beautiful it is because, because it's the person's labor in there their love absolutely. and all of that stuff that's absolutely. into your product and certain patterns a machine cannot do you know it's right. like it's like for those of you who are in the music industry and who do music production this is a perfect analogy it's like using a piano on the computer or using a live piano you know on a computer you're limited, certain rhythms you can't do, like thirds and things like that. Where on a piano, an uh, actual piano, you can do all different types of rhythms. So it's right. like that. Right. So, you know, I think the hats are cool. I'm not a big fedora person, right? Like I have a small head, 
You know, I need a brim that yeah, is. Look dope on, on, no, on you. absolutely, no. especially with the beard. What? It overpowers. It's just overpowering. You know, like I mm. need for this to be shown. You know, and a big brim hat is gonna hide that. Two each is on. Two each is on. Like I, but I go it to, looks good on you. It looks good. I go on to you. the barber shops in my, in you know, in Brooklyn, and I sell my hats like some. And people buy the day. Yeah, the barbers love it. Yo, the Jamaican barbers in Brooklyn. And they step out they in love the hats. Fedoras. You got to get them to take yes. pictures. I know, right? So, <laughs> I can I see. You know what? I dress, I dress so many people, but not everybody's photogenic. So I don't right. get to the bulk of the people that I dress. I don't get the pictures of, but that's fine. But yeah, so barbers um, in, in Brooklyn. I, I was just at um, Hyper Nation Barbershop. And um, shout out to Bolo and Reddy and everybody over there. They, they bought a bunch of hats. Uh, and then some people were like, yo, honestly, fedoras are just not my style. Right, right, really just like my coat. Some people are just like, you know, I think it's, it looks great, but it's not for me. Absolutely. You know, fur is not for me or whatever it is. Can you make it in full fur? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So let's talk a little bit about you because I saw a video that you did kind of educating people on the differences between the real fur and faux fur. So right. give the, I guess give your listeners a kind of background on that. Okay, so you know I, I did a, uh, a live where I showed the different fur pelts mm -hmm. that I had. I showed a coyote, a lynx, um, I think a silver fox, and, and a gray fox. And I got a lot of really nasty comments from people you know you're a jerk you're this you're that like we are we still killing animals right. in you know 2019 you know you should be ashamed of yourself mm. you know use faux fur and what most people who come on and make those type of comments don't have is the education mm. Right, they. I know. I saw a video of you reading the. Yeah, they've they, like, they they've seen. That's wealthy guy right there. Yeah, they. You can argue all day about opinions, but you cannot argue about facts, facts. unless you just like to argue, right? Very, um, and what? A lot of times, people, it's uh, feeling based, mm. not fact based, right. right? And and the fact of the matter is, is that faux fur is extremely harmful. To the environment it's plastic mm -hmm. it is plastic it gets into the air it gets into the water mm -hmm. uh faux fur does not biodegrade mm -hmm. whereas real fur does real fur is from the earth mm -hmm. right it's, a, it's an animal it's it's, right. it's nature mm -hmm. um faux fur is a man-made thing mm -hmm. you know so a fur pelt over you know however many years will will biodegrade whereas that, that faux fur, you're going to have that for a long time. And most likely, if you have it for a long time, it's going to be looking crazier than it, it looks now. Right? Because hey, you know faux fur be looking nappy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not It's not right. It's not right. Yeah, it's not real. So, you know, I, I get it. If, if you are into faux fur, be into faux fur. If you're into real fur, be into real, real fur. Right now, they're trying to uh, ban... New fur sales in New York. Did you mm. know that? I did not know that. No. Yeah, they're trying to burn. They they they're trying to ban uh fur sales, uh, new fur sales like 